Welcome back to the University of Calgary iGEM team's first Second Life Ethics Conference. Now, before the intermission, we started out talking about the potentials for synthetic biology and how they are linked to potential, I uh, guess, future enhancement of human beings. Now, we will continue on talking about another concern involving the advances we have made in synthetic biology and the potential future for this field. So a large concern with synthetic biology is the use of bacteria for, I guess, bioterrorism purposes. Some individuals, particularly those of the precautionary uh, position, feel that the open source system that the field currently has, that is the parts registry in which anyone can access and order parts to compile genetic circuits with is flawed in that it allows for the um, easy access of, I guess, criminals to create biological circuits that will allow bacteria to do harmful things and that through open source checkpoints in which we can monitor the activity of scientists and individuals are missing. So, with the advances that you have seen in synthetic biology or what you think is possible, do you feel that there should be more regulations governing um, genetic engineering and the field itself? Well, Mandy, you bring up an interesting point, but the point that I want to get across is that synthetic biology is a new and developing field. And because of this, we require that um, there is an open source, as in the registry of standard biological parts, in order for this field to get moving and to get the beneficial ap applications out of this. We need that. We need to um, have all these parts as open source so that everyone can access them and start to think. Okay, well maybe I can start making this application or maybe that application. Yes, we can't deny the fact that. Um, this might be used for bioterrorism or for negative applications as well, but I, I strongly feel that in order to get the word out about synthetic biology and for the public to understand um, the beneficial powers of synthetic biology, we require that it is that the registry stays open source. Um, but do you feel that it should be completely open source, or do you think there should be a couple regulations or patenting involved? Well, I think that um, when we're talking about putting genes into the registry now, we need to um, make sure that these genes are well characterized and that we know what they're used for. And if we have a gene that um, might be beneficial in one context, but yet if it's put into another context can be harmful, I think that certain regulations should be put in place in order to make sure that um, a, pet, a potentially bad part doesn't, um, isn't used in the construction of a genetic circuit that can potentially harm people. So yes, I do feel that regulation should be placed on um, genes, but I guess that comes to the next point is that this open source registry really needs, um, every part needs to be well characterized because we want the people who are using these parts to understand the global, I guess, impact as to what these genes and these different parts can have when applied to different systems. I think you bring up an interesting point about characterization because right now a lot of because a lot of the parts in the in the registry are being added by students, there's kind of not all the parts are completely characterized and not all the parts we completely know how they function and how they're gonna work. And that's kind of a problem right now with the open source that this needs to be improved upon so that we actually understand what all these things do. Do you feel that with certain things like patents, I mean a lot of companies are coming out with patents for actual genetic sequences and those kinds of things, do you think those I guess would perhaps motivate individuals to ensure that their parts are well characterized? I definitely feel that a patenting system would ensure that every part is characterized because that just it gives extra motivation that 
concept of owning something or possessing something. That way you know exactly every single detail about this and then therefore you can ensure that the other people who are going to use it also know all the specific details about it. Um, unfortunately, you know that patenting would probably, I guess, affect the open source basis. Of course, I think that um, it would also be beneficial to see what sort of patenting can be done. I mean, there's quite a big difference between patenting a process in, for example, compiling these genetic circuits versus, you know, actually patenting, you know, I found this genetic circuit. So, you know, every time someone uses it, they have to pay me. So I guess it would be important to look at exactly what type of patenting we're thinking about when applying this, especially to the parts registry that we already have. Exactly, I think that's a really important, a really important point there because I think there is a difference between, for example, patenting a bacteria that's able to produce a malaria drug versus patenting gene genes from the human genome that are going to increase people's susceptibility to breast cancer. I think there's a big difference between what you're doing there and what it's going to look like. So I think patenting is kind of a hard, a hard topic and that we have to look at what exactly we are placing patents on. Prima, you spoke to a lot of, you know, biotechnological bio companies and those sorts of things. Did you ever encounter, I guess, any individuals had sort of concerns about uh, the profitability, I guess, or the security of synthetic biology? Um, I have been directly spoken to uh, companies regarding um, patenting um, biological systems, but um, I believe that it would definitely be a, it's a really good idea uh, to regulate um, the uh, constructs that we are submitting to the registry, um, mostly because um, companies who invest in our um, projects or our, um, our, yeah, our projects will um, most well, we'll be more interested in, um, I guess, um, just I guess investing more in our project when it, they feel that it is it has um, positive um, outcomes that they, they which are reliable as opposed to potential negative, um, um, like ne I guess just negative um, implications of the project. Well, this is a good point here. I mean, we're talking about how not a lot of people know about synthetic biology yet. And so how do we get the word out about synthetic biology? How do we get the word out to industries? And how do we get funding from them? And how do we progress this field of science? Well, we sell um, the benefits of synthetic biology to them. So we frame it in such a way that this is how it's going to help you. And these are going to be the important applications for you. And we don't necessarily talk about the negative implications because then these companies are just going to turn their backs and they won't want, um, for example, a gene that might have a negative impact or the, in a sense that the company might be malrepresented or if they use a destructive gene. Um, so I think that it is important, again, that we educate um, people about the different applications of synthetic biology. Although it is important to get out the word with beneficial applications, we also need to warn companies about this type of thing.